Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's project is a skincare DIY project that I'm really excited about. And as you can see here, I found some real cute vintage ice cream balls. And I thought this would be just a great idea to put these uh, bubble scoops or bath truffles in this type of containers here to make it a little bit special. So these bath truffles or bubble scoops are basically like a bath bomb, but more like with the idea of moisturizing your skin, making it soft, you know, having this very luxurious bath experience, as opposed to a bath bomb where you have more this entertaining factor of fizzing and colors, etc. Voila, so we have these uh, spoons also that come with it. I think it's really cute. It's also porcelain. Let's see what we can do with it. And then as an alternative, maybe a more economical one, or if you don't have such bowls at hand, could be these plastic bowls here. And you have also the paper version of it, these typical ones where you put ice cream in it. And I think there could be many other variations. And maybe you have a good idea. You could um, leave me a comment. I love to hear from you, have feedbacks, and see what ideas people can come up with. I think it's very, very interesting. So let's move on to the things that we need for this project here. First of all, you want to have a tray. Best is always to use a tray, as I said. And then I placed some uh, parchment paper on it, so the scoops won't stick to it. I'm gonna set this one aside for when we are ready. And then you need a scale. And uh, to find out where to place the scale. Okay, once you have found the spot for your scale, you want to have ready some mica for coloring. You could, of course, also use some La Bombe colorants that are made especially for bath bombs, some polysorbate 80, which is an emulsifier, and then some fragrance oil of your choice. The emulsifier is really important, but it's optional, but it makes sure that your oil is really combining well with your water, so you don't have these oil bubbles floating around in your tub. And then for other tools, you want to have this uh, ice cream spoon with a, a twist thing inside here. I don't know exactly how you call this. And then a measuring spoon. A fork, I will show you why a fork in just a minute. And then a spatula. If you see this uh, nice tool here that I just recently got, it's a spatula holder, I love it. I can leave a link down in the description where you can find it. Then you want to have a container for your dry ingredients and one for your wet ingredients. I like to use glass, it's very hygienic and very easy to clean. So for the wet ingredients, the first thing we're gonna need is uh, cocoa butter. And this is a way that you can order cocoa butter in little pellets like this. This is like for chocolate makers. It's very easy to weigh out because it comes in these small chips here. So I find this really, really practical. And cocoa butter is really a very nice ingredient for skincare. It's moisturizing, it's, it's nice, it's hydrating. So I really love it. And it makes your balm really hard. So you want to have 50 grams of cocoa butter. And then once you have it measured out, you want to melt it down. I'm using a double boiler. I think a double boiler is just a great and gentle method for melting oils or butters. I feel it is very safe and that way you can make sure that you're not overheating your ingredients. So while we are waiting for the cocoa butter to melt down, which will not take a long time of course, we are going to move on to the dry ingredients. And the first ingredient that you want to weigh out is the sodium bicarbonate or also called baking soda and you basically always want to have for such a product two parts of sodium bicarbonate and then one part of citric acid and the combination of these two will make 
the bubble scoop dissolve in your water. And we're gonna need 200 grams of this baking soda. The next non-optional dry ingredient is citric acid that you can also find on Amazon. But you want to use this anhydrous version of it. It means that it is water-free, it contains no water. And that is important because if you have like a bath bomb or a bath truffle containing citric acid that has water in it, it might be that this bath truffle is starting to fizz before you actually use it and you don't want to have that. Anyways, that said, I also highly recommend to use a dehumidifier. It's especially good if you're doing bath bombs, bath truffles and things like that. Okay, so we want to use here half of the amount of the sodium bicarbonate that we saw before. So in this case, it's 100 grams. And I will leave the recipe down in the description box, also in percentages, so you can also use it for a different batch size that you want to make. Moving on to the next step here, it is to combine both dry ingredients, meaning the sodium bicarbonate and the citric acid, and you want to have it completely clump free. And I like to use a fork because I think it has more possibility to grab inside the mixture rather than to use a spoon. And some of you might even want to add a mixer to the mixture. That's also totally okay. Some people love to put their hands in it. That's okay too. Whatever works, just make sure you're not adding any water in it. You don't touch it with um, wet hands or wet spoons or forks or whatever you're using. And then this is of course optional, but it makes it really pretty. You want to add some mica to the mixture. And I'm using buttercup sparkle mica from You Make It Up. It's a very happy, bright yellow, because I want to have a banana ice cream. Okay, this sounds really funny, you know, but uh, I'm sure all of you will have their favorite ice cream flavors and mine was like hazelnut, banana and melon. These Italian ice creams, oh my god. Anyway, so you want to combine this mica to your mixture really, really well. Start by adding a little bit and you can always add more, but you can never take it back. So really do it step by step. And then you will see if you're happy with the coloration. Always keep in mind that by adding the wet ingredients, it will get a little darker, of course. All right, so you combine everything very, very well until you're happy that everything is really incorporated because then we need to add our wet ingredients to it. Now our cocoa butter here, as you can see, beautiful, is completely melted and it smells like chocolate. And um, here we have it. So to this one now, we are going to add the other wet ingredients, which is polysorbet 80, and we will add about 5 grams. I'm using the measuring spoon here because it's really practical and handy. And of course, if you are using a liquid colorant, you will add the liquid colorant to the wet ingredients, as opposed to the mica that you are combining to the dry ones. And here I'm looking for my banana fragrance oil. This one is from Mystic Moment. It is so delicious. I'm using it also for my regular truffle recipe because it's just so fantastic. You can add anything from two to three grams. It's really according to your preference. Just check the percentage rates that you have from your supplier. Just making sure that the dry ingredients are well combined here before adding the wet ones and here are the wet ingredients i'm just blending everything together so it's nicely incorporated and the trick here is to work very fast while the oils the cocoa butter is still very hot work as quick as you can, but at the same time really make sure 
but everything is well combined. You can see here there are still a lot of dry parts, so you really want to get everything mixed very, very thoroughly. It looks like I'm mixing up some polenta. You know what that is? This is a North Italian dish. If you've never tried it, you should really try it. I'm gonna leave a picture here. So, but the mixture looks like we are really getting there, just making sure that all the clumps are out. But it doesn't need to be totally precise since we want to have this ice cream kind of look. All right, so we take our tray here with the parchment paper on it. Then you scoop out a little bit of the mixture here to fill the spoon and you want to press it against. Not too much because we want still to have this kind of ice cream look. You place it on the parchment paper and then you gently release it. And here we go. It looks like an ice cream. I think it looks quite pretty. So just press against it, not too much, just mainly on the bottom. Place it and then gently release by lifting the spoon making sure you not shake it around or something. Because the mixture is still very loose, you know, and if you would touch it now, it was, would just fall apart. But um, by tomorrow, it will be rock hard. So you release it again, and then we make another one here. You can gently press it at the bottom, place it, release it, and lift it gently. And here we go. We have our first banana ice cream scoops. So we are moving on to the next color and next flavor here. And the procedure is exactly the same. You weigh out your cocoa butter as a first thing so it can melt down while you prepare your dry ingredients, which is again sodium bicarbonate here and citric acid. And here I have this uh, nice lime color from You Make It Up. And I'm using it with a brambleberry fragrance oil called Autumn Fig Harvest. So I'm combining everything here, the green mica, for a pistachio kind of look. And then I'm gonna fast forward the rest of the procedure here so the ones who are interested can see again. We have the wet ingredients ready here. I'm gonna add the polysorbate 80, the fragrance oil, mix everything and then while it's still hot mix it inside the dry ingredients. The mixture is ready so I'm gonna grab my tray here. So let's go with the green ice cream. I'm scooping out some mixture pressing it down, especially on the bottom. Place it on the tray, release, and then gently lift. Okay, so you can see this one here is a little bit too loose, so I need to squeeze it a little better the next time here. Gently lifting, this one is better. And you, you know, it's a little bit of practice to really see how much pressure you need to use and so forth. It's also depending on how moist your mixture really is. But that's good because practice is what we anyways need. And then what you could do if you're not happy with one scoop, then you just take it away, you add it back to the bowl and you just remix it and you do it again. And here we go, much better. So we have our green ice cream balls ready as well. Coming up next is the chocolate ice cream flavor. And I used chestnut brown mica from You Make It Up. And the fragrance I used is dark chocolate from Brambleberry. I absolutely love this fragrance. It really smells like dark chocolate without being too sweet but being very chocolatey at the same time. All right, so we're moving on to the last flavor. This is a black raspberry vanilla fragrance oil from Saint Perfect. that's a company in the UK. And then I used Fantasia Pink 
from uh, You Make It Up and I thought it would be good to have like a red kind of color here just for the variation so I'm pressing it again gently it looks good the only error that you can actually make is try and go touch the scoops because they will fall apart and even though you have the impression that they are really fragile and they are too loose or too crumbly you know just leave it because i promise you the cocoa butter will make it so hard all right so the last one is on i think it looks really great also the color palette is quite a variation let's have a close look so cute isn't it So it's the next day and it looks like our scoops are really hard, so that's beautiful. They smell amazing. Now let's, let's see how we can go about. So first of all we want to add some tissue paper inside of the bowl in the bottom, just like so. And then, isn't that cute? Let's add a little spoon here, just for decoration. What do you think? I think it's a great idea for a gift. Let's do another one, again tissue paper at the bottom. And here you now have another one. Voila. And here you have another possibility of how you can package it. This is just some ideas. I mean, there are a lot of other variations that you could do. So we had these plastic bowls that you saw earlier on. So I'm just gonna place the scoops in it, wrap it in cellophane. We add a ribbon to it, a nice one. I think packaging really makes a difference. see these yellow ones here with the matching ribbon and I think this is a really good gift that you can make for someone you like I also had these type of little cake liners sitting around and I thought why not they could also be used This little one here as well that can hold one scoop. Voila, it's a cute idea as well. And here you have a close up of all the kind of packaging we did today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Would like to see your own creations with it. I hope to see you around very soon for another video, and I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye.